back to the tin barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee, and today we've got a project that's going to involve making a uh, tool for the lathe. Uh, sometime back, I had an opportunity to pick up uh, about eight or ten, I believe it was ten of these uh, expanding mandrels. They're uh, for turning between centers, of course. There were several of them uh, from down to number one, which goes from a half inch to nine sixteenths up to this one that goes to an inch and a half to 1.6. So nice collection of them and at a very, very reasonable price. But like so many things, uh, you pick up one item and you need other items to go with it. And that was the case with these. As I say, they're turning for turning between centers and I needed some lathe dogs and I didn't have any. I thought about trying to make some uh, just out of round stock, but I like this idea of having that uh, uh, oblong for the work stock to bed into. I got to looking on eBay for these, and guys, it's it's amazing what people are asking for these things on eBay. I was watching several auctions, and they were looking asking anywhere from fifteen twenty dollars for these little small one inch ones to forty and forty five dollars for the larger ones. And I had about reconciled, okay, that's what I gotta pay if I'm gonna have any of them. I decided I'd look on McMaster Car and I got my eyes opened. Uh, went to McMaster Car and searched for lathe dogs. The half inch ones, three dollars. This inch and a half one nine dollars brand new stock uh, i'm sure they're imports but uh uh the paint job is not the best in the world they look like they were just simply dipped but they're absolutely work for what they're designed for so i picked up uh from half inch to inch and a half in uh quarter inch increments them with shipping and everything i had uh about sixty dollars involved in it much less than the ebay auctions were for a similar group of them. But to drive these on the lathe, I need a drive plate. I've got the, the large uh, uh, face plate that come with the, the uh, lathe. You've seen a previous uh, video where I made a fixture plate for that. Used it several times since. And that face plate would work on this except for that face plate sits way back here. And the drive dog, the drive on the dog wouldn't fit into that. I'll show you more about that when we get over to the lathe. I was watching some videos, uh, as we all do. Another creator, uh, Chuck Barmarino, outside Screwball, and he was recently did a video series on uh, making a dead center or turning a dead center for his lathe. He had picked up one that was the taper didn't match. I don't remember the name of the taper in his headstock, but it was not a Morse taper. So he was turning that, and in that video, he showed a picture of his drive plate. And that's what we're going to try to make in this video today. If you'll notice in this, he was very particular to get the face of the drive plate even with the end of the dead center or the, uh, the crown on the dead center. That's what we want to do here, and then that way the dog can reach into this slot. Now for some of the smaller ones, that dog still will not be long enough, dog tail will not be long enough to reach into this slot. So down here at the bottom, there's another, I'm looking at this backwards here, there'll be another slot milled in there to uh, hold a bolt. What we're going to attempt to do today is make something like this. Hopefully that will show up. This is about the size, but one side, this side over here will have a straight slot for the long tails. The tails on the, the bigger dogs will, will reach that. Over here on this side, we'll have a two-step in there for the head of a bolt to fit in there. Now, the material for this, 
Facebook friend uh, that I, individual I've met on Facebook, fellow machinist, uh, I think he's professional. Uh, I'm a hobbyist, of course. But he was showing some pictures on his Facebook page the other day of a uh, CNC plasma uh, torch that they have. And he was, the thread that started out was something to the fact, uh, any question on uh, how thick a material that our uh, plasma would cut. And he was cutting a piece of three quarter inch thick uh, steel. And I replied back to it, kind of in jest, that I wish he was closer by. He's from Graham, Texas, which is a little northwest of Dallas. But uh, he replied back, uh, basically asking what you need, Lee. And I told him I'd like to have a piece uh, if there was enough of that stock left. About, you know, seven or eight inches, I wasn't sure at that time. And he said he would check, didn't know whether there was enough in that left or not. And I told him I would check too and see exactly about what size I did need. And I checked and I sent him back, told him I needed about six inches, maybe five and a half to six inches. He replied back and he said, would well, seven inches be all right? And I said, that would be great. He sent me this in the mail, three quarter inch thick, nice steel plate. Larry, I appreciate it very much. Larry Robinson, like I say, from Graham, Texas. I appreciate this very, very much. It's exactly what I need. But the first thing we want to do on this uh, is clean up this edge. This is a plasma torch cut. We want to clean that up. So I'm going to meet you over at the lathe and show you how I'm going to set this up. If you watch my channel, you've seen me do this before, but, on, but I've done it before on much smaller pieces of uh, work stock. But what I'm going to do is use this little mandrel that I made here uh, and I've cut a grid in it just to uh, help relieve it when I get ready to remove the glue. But we're going to hold that in between the uh, live center here in the tailstock and this mandrel and put force on it. This is a situation where if I had the tool that I'm trying to make now to use as a drive plate, it would be much easier to make the tool that I'm making, if you understand what I'm saying. But I'm going to put a little super glue on this just to help hold it. This is going to be a mess here a little bit. I've got a center located on this side. All right. That's centered in there now. Let me step out of the way a little bit. I'm going to give that glue a few minutes to set and get the lathe set up, and then we'll come back and we'll start turning this outside edge. All right, I think the uh, glue has had time to set now, and I've got the, uh, the travel on the lathe set up. So we're going to start out taking this fairly easy here and work this down. Uh, Larry cut this uh, seven inches. Uh, I'm probably going to take it down to about six and a half inches, whatever it takes to, to clean it up all the way around. I'm starting with a small cut of 40 thousandths, that's 20 on each side. Of course, we got to get through this. Uh, I'm sure this outside edge got a bit of heat treating here. All right, I'm going to continue this process. I'll bring you back when I get through. Uh, when I get through this hard surface that's on the parameter right now. Okay, I've got the outside of it now. 
cleaned up all the way around. I'm going to make one more final pass on it. This has been some very hard edge on here. All right, what I'm going to do now is uh, use some acetone, release this glue back here on the back, and then we're going to put it in the uh, three jaw uh, with the outside jaws on here and try to face it off and bore out the center. So I'll bring it back when I get this off. All right, I got the glue broke loose and got the piece off and got it in the chuck now. Got plenty of clearance around here. What I'm going to do first is just put a little chamfer on this edge. Not the final chamfer, but I just want to get a little bit of that cleaned up. Now what we're going to do is drill this, drill and bore. The sleeve that goes in my spindle is two-part. It's a 5MT adapter down to a 3MT. That's one of the reasons this sticks out so far uh, from the spindle. And that is 1.759, so we're going to bore out uh, to about 1.8 inches, just so that clears in uh, through the center hole we're fixing to, fixing to make. And of course, I'm going to cut this in several steps here, uh, just to see if the whole thing is as hard as this outside was or if this was uh, just hardened due to the uh, heat. That was a half inch bit. I have a one inch bit that's not in the best shape in the world. I'm going to try it. We'll see how if it'll cut. That'll be a whole lot less boring I have to do. All right, that did pretty good. Obviously, one side was was cutting a little bit more than the other, but that just saved a whole lot of boring. So I'm going to get set up with a boring bar, and then we'll come back and bore this out. Boring bar is set up now. Uh, get some coolant ready for it. I've got a measure, taken a measurement on that. Uh, I made a couple passes with the boring bar and cleaned it up. Took a measurement. Uh, put it in, plugged it into the uh, DRO, so it should be ready to go now. We've got about 70 thousandths to go. I'm sorry, about 700 thousandths to go. All right, I'll bring you back when we get a little closer. I know you can't see anything right now with the coolant line. All right, I think we're about ready to do our final pass now. One more pass to make, and then we'll uh, check it and make a spring cut. All right, that clears fine. That's exactly what we're looking for. So now I'll just make a spring cut and clean it up. Now let's see if we can face the uh, this outer surface on here now. May have to reset up, see if this will reach out. Oh yeah.
All right, I'm going to, I need to look at that to be sure that's going to, it's going to clear there. That's going to be very close. So I'm going back. May have to extend my tool out just a little bit. Let me take care of that and then I'll bring you back. I've got my tool extended out a little bit now so I don't have to worry about the compound uh, getting in the way or bumping the work. I'm going to back, back out here to the edge and take a little bit deeper cut. I was not cleaning up anyhow. So. Okay, that still didn't quite clean up in there. There were some pits on this side, so I'm going to do that a couple more times until I got this face clear and then we'll turn it around and face the other side. Okay, that's cleaned up very nicely now. We're going to come in here and just just so slightly put a chamfer on the inside. And I think we'll do the same thing on the outside. Put a little more chamfer. I cut most of that chamfer off that uh, when I was facing that we put on to begin with. All right, I'm happy with this side and the outer edge. I'm going to turn it around in the chuck, face the other side, chamfer it. Then we'll be ready to go over to the mill and start putting our bolt hole pattern in and our mounting slots, or our uh, lathe dog slots. All righty, second. Second face is uh, second side has been faced. We got a good looking piece of metal now. So I'm gonna get this set up on the on the mill, get center located, and then we'll start with our bolt hole pattern and our two slots. To determine the diameter of the bolt hole pattern, I've got the uh, four jaw chuck over here on the workbench now. And what I did was simply take my uh, uh, calipers, digital calipers, zero it out on one of the existing studs, then measure from outside to outside, and that gives me the distance between the studs. I did that on all three of them, averaged that out, Actually, in reality, what I did was I did it on the three positions, on the four jaw, on the three jaw, on the collet chuck, and the uh, face plate that I have for the, for the uh, lathe, just to be sure they were, uh, that I had a good figure on there. And that came out to, uh, well, what I did was take those distances, plug them into a calculator. There's plenty of calculators available online to do that. I happen to have one that I wrote myself that you simply give it the distance between the holes and the number of holes and it will tell you the diameter. And in this case it come out to 3.873 which is very very close to 9 mm, 98 millimeters. So what I'm going to do is set the uh, uh, DRO up for that. Let me turn you around where you can see that. I actually have the work workpiece on the mill table right now. Already got it mounted down and I've got the center located. Okay, so with the center located, the DRO zeroed out. I'm gonna go to the bolt hole pattern and I'm gonna be using the X, Y axis. I'm gonna be starting from the center location of our work and we determine our hole diameter to be 3.873, 3.8729, okay. Number of holes, three. And I'm gonna start it at 30 degrees. That way I'm not directly in line with the, with the X axis when I get ready to cut the slots in. So the starting angle will be 30 degrees. The ending angle, 270 degrees. So the first hole position All right, 
I'll bring you back down to the workpiece. So I'm in position now to, to drill the first hole. And these holes are 10 millimeter, 10 by one and a half pitch. So the uh, tap drill for 10 millimeter is an 8.5. I'm actually going to work my way around and do a center drill, all three of them, then I'll come back and drill them, then I'll come back and tap each one. So on the DRO, we'll go to the second hole, and the X is the only axis that changes on this one. We'll go to our third hole. We'll go back to our second hole. This is our 10 by one and a half uh, pitch tap. So we'll get down in the lowest gear we got. And I don't expect this to tap all the way through, but this should get it started. Okay. I won't go back to the other two holes and tap them. Then we'll start milling out our slots. Okay, we're ready to start cutting our first slot now. This is going to be the slot that the uh, the dog leg will fit into. I've measured this largest one, and it's 0.72. But what I'm going to do is use my new favorite end mill, which is this uh, uh, Niagara roughing end mill, and I want. Uh, Go about half to half to depth here, uh, then step over. Uh, let's see, that will to get it there about 287 thousandths on each side of zero. So for now, I'll just zero out my DR over there to know about where I am, and I've got my stopping point over here. It's going to be 1.75 from the center. Let's see what my thickness is now after I got it, after we got it all cleaned up. About 700 thousandths. So let's take about 350 at the time. We'll start with that and see how that does. All the X is locked down except the X. All right, I believe that's going to cut fine. We'll put some coolant on. Now I'm going to step over 287 thousandths from center. Now we'll come 287 thousandths on the other side of zero. And we'll conventional meal on the way out. Now I'll come back to zero on the Y and go down the uh, the balance of the uh, depth 
and clean the rest of it out. I'll bring you back when we get ready to uh, go to the other side and cut the bolt slot. Okay, we've got the slot cut on this side now for the larger lathe dogs that the, the leg can fit into. Now I'm going to move the camera around over here to the other side so you can see what I'm going to do over here. But what I'm going to do is actually put a slot in there that will hold a nut in place on this back side and a half inch bolt go through the other side. Okay, maybe you understand now if you didn't before why I offset the first hole here uh, to 30 degrees. That way on my Y axis I've got a straight line to cut these two slots with. Now this second slot is going to be for a bolt or it's going to be, the head will be cut off, but it'll be a stud sticking out there. That will have a nut on one side and we're going to cut a trough in here now for the nut on the back side. And then it'll be just a matter of tightening it down. The nut will be held in place on the back side. So again, we're going to go we're going to go half of our depth for the nut, which is 350 thousandths. And again, this is a 7 16 end mill. The nut for a uh, half 13 bolt is a 3 quarter. So 3 quarter minus the 438 is 312 divided by 2. We'll step over 156 on each, each side of zero. Okay. Back on center on the Y axis. Now we want to step over 156 thousandths. Now we step over 156 on the other side. Now if all my calculations are correct, and I cut to the calculations, a three quarter inch nut should fit in there. And it looks like I need to take a few more thousandths off just to give a clearance there. We'll go 160 thousandths on each side of zero. Okay, now the nut fits in there. So the next thing we want to do is of course come back to center on our Y. And we're going to want to slot in here now to go all the way through and we want it a half inch wide. And the half inch minus the uh, 7 sixteenths end mill is 62 thousandths. Divided by two is 31 thousandths. We'll probably go 35 on each side just to, just so it doesn't bind. Now we'll step over to 35 thousandths. And a half inch bolt fits nicely in there. All right, what I'm going to do is take this out now. I think we're finished on the mill. 
So I'm going to take this out, deburr it, then we'll go over to the lathe and look at what our next step needs to be. Okay, I'm back over here at the lathe now, and I hope I got the camera set so that I can show you a couple other things of why this plate is going to be just a little bit different mounting than the way the uh, uh, the chucks, call it chuck, four jaw, three jaw, and the, the face plate that I have uh, for this lathe. Here's what it looks like now. We cut the slot in the back for the half inch nut. We've got our three holes drilled and tapped. This slot, of course, will be for the larger lathe dogs. And this will be for the smaller ones. A bolt go through here as a pusher bolt. Now the way, what I've got for this spindle, as I showed you earlier, is a 5MT and a 5MT to 3MT adapter. Now I want this plate, unlike the other devices on here that mount tight up against the spindle over here, I want this, as I showed you in, in Chuck's picture, I want this to be lined up with the end of this cone right here. So the best way that I've come up with uh, to determine that, I'm just going to set a square right here. And then measure from this backing, and that's 1.65 inches. Then, of course, we'll take away the thickness of the plate, which I believe I'll get an exact measurement on it, but it was around 700 thousandths. And that's when our mounting bolts, unlike the other mounting bolts, there will be a space in between here. I think this was going to be enough for today's video, though. Um, Larry, again, I appreciate very much this piece of material. It has turned out very nicely. I um, think it's going to work ex extremely well for a drive plate. So we're going to wind this video up, and most likely in next week's video, we'll make the bolts and get this mounted on there, and maybe even show it in use with the expanding mandrels. Take care, and I'll see you on the next video.